project is to make a map of the Caribbean and uh, quantify carbon sequestration by seagrasses. So how much carbon can be taken up by seagrasses? The thought is that that will help fight climate change, take some carbon out of the atmosphere. Are you extending the drop buoy? Yeah. Thank you. Looks pretty clear today. Subsampling. So once it is filled with sediment, um, we will take little syringes and take little samples out of every second hole. But um, when we take the core in the first place, we have to cover these holes um, because otherwise all the sediment would run out. So for that, uh, we will use the duct tape. And um, our goal is to just cover these holes and make the duct tape fit very, very tightly. Because if there are any holes or any um, wrinkles in the duct tape, then when you drive the core down into the sediment, it will catch and maybe remove the duct tape and mess up the whole core. So one thing that uh, helps attach it is um, to clean the core well before. So we would use some fresh water. core. We had 12 of these produced by machine shop and um, they are being provided to all of our partners. So we send these out or we bring them with us. All right, so now we have to tape the end in this direction to give it a little bit more stability. All right and then uh, we do the same on the top. So we want to make sure we know where the first opening is and that we drive the core into the sediment only up to slightly above that hole. If we drive it deeper, then we're not going to be able to sample the top layer of the sediment. So uh, we want to somehow mark um, the area just above the top hole. So when we are driving the core down, we see immediately, okay, we have to stop here, that's it. For that we just use the tape again and uh, wrap it sideways around the top. That should be good. And now we need the plunger. This plunger, it fits perfectly into the core tube. And if it doesn't fit perfectly, it's possible to adjust the width a little bit with this nut. But it will stay in the core at first on the bottom, and then when we drive the core into the sediment, it's gonna uh, rise up. And once we're done, it will stay on top and seal the core. going to be um, attached to a tripod underwater so the uh, plunger stays always on the sediment surface right right there and this is our core tube prepared a piece of wood we wait in the corners Super 
vessels work. One person has to be hammering and the other person has to make sure that the tripod is going to stay in place. Vials that are pre weighed with no cups and already labeled. We have enough vials for every sub core. We use these syringes to um, record exactly the volume of sediment we take from the core. Then we transfer that into the vial. And so we have to write down the vial number and the core volume and the depth interval that we subsampled. So these data sheets are standardized for this. And so there's a magic moment. To see if the core actually works out. If the water is still in the core, that's a good sign because um, that means that we didn't lose a lot of sediment with the water and so on. So this is where our sediment layer starts right here. So let's tape a uh, tape measure to this. This is our zero. This is um, the sediment surface. And then we count from there down. Okay. So this is at uh, 2.5. We sample all the intervals in the top up to 10 centimeters or so, and then we go by every second. Or so. We want to uh, capture the variability or variation in sediment, and uh, usually it varies the most in the top 10 centimeters. The deeper layers are interesting because 
um, you're looking into deep time. It's you know hundreds to thousands of years, and then you can check what happened back then. And uh, the top layers are more the short-term processes. Within the core, you might be uh, seeing some shells of um, specific animals. It's mostly the shells that would survive in the core. It's 4.5. So we did already collect uh, cores from very different locations, um, also seagrass beds, but we are trying to capture um, a diversity of different types of seagrass habitats. So uh, we already cored um, near shore, where we mostly had muddy sediments, um, a lot of uh, nutrients and productivity. And now we are out here at the reef. Uh, in oligotrophic waters, um, where it's mostly broken down shell material that we find. And so uh, we can expect the um, types of carbon and uh, the amounts of carbon that we find in these cores over here to be very different from the ones in other cores. And um, if we want to characterize carbon sequestration um, across the Caribbean, we have to try to capture all different types of habitats. So we did uh, pre-weigh the vials. Um, so that we know the, the dry weight of it and then um, the sample that we put in there we're going to directly dry and by the difference of the weight um, of the wet sample in the vial and the dry sample in the vial uh, we know how much water there is in the sample and we can say something about the density of, of the sediment and um, it doesn't really matter how much uh, material we take it has to be enough so we can analyze it um, but it's very important to know how much it was so that we can uh, calculate the density. We plan to do a series of analysis, so we need a lot of sample. Being very careful with transferring the sample from the syringe into the vial, because everything, all the material that we lose is going to be error in our density calculations. The sediment is pretty homogeneous. So uh, one interval looks very much the same as the other in terms of um, coloration, grain size and so on. Um, so we might just do every second. So every sample that we take now is representative of a larger part of the core than the samples up there. Um, so we are going to determine the percent organic carbon in there and the percent inorganic carbon, so shell material. We will also test uh, nutrients, so um, phosphorus and nitrogen, again in percent. And then we will uh, do stable isotope analysis of um, carbon nitrogen, uh, which is going to tell us a little bit about where the carbon comes from. So um, is it seagrass material or is it maybe, does it come from land? So this doesn't allow us to uh, continue coring.
course over here with above ground biomass of seagrass, so leaves and then roots and rhizomes. And uh, we collect eight of these per site. So every second quadrat that we survey, we collect these biomass cores. Thank you. 